All right, everyone, we start off talking today about Liz Cheney and the Republican Party because the House Republicans are planning to throw her out as one of the House leaders. Uh, I support this, obviously, but I actually think they should go further. Uh, and I'll try to explain, like when Democrats... Uh, Namby Pamby, her or Mitt Romney, Jeb, and other neocons. I, I'll tell you what they're really doing, and it's great reverse psychology. First and foremost, though, there will be a link, um, uh, four links in a pinned comment. If you're watching on YouTube, YouTube has returned to algorithmically throttling creators. I'm not the only one. I've had corroboration from a half dozen other people. Uh, it started again yesterday, after a couple of weeks of reprieve. Um, so, yeah, YouTube, obviously, it doesn't care about its creators anymore, and I think it's guinea pig A-B testing us at the moment, so keeping that in mind. Uh, but there are other sites that I use that don't algorithmically throttle me. By the way, 20,000 uh, subscribers on Rumble now, so <laughs> over the course of a couple of months. Uh, Republicans should not only uh, remove her from her leadership role, they should expel her outright from the party. Uh, here's why. Liz Cheney and Mitt Romney and people like that, McConnell uh, most of the time, arguably, they represent the old-style GOP. Nothing says youth appeal like a bunch of aged has-been neocons peddling the same shit they were peddling in the 1990s back when the baby boomers still had color in their hair. If the Republican Party is genuinely interested in having any chance of, of making headway with younger voters, they can't continue the same failed policies that literally led first to Obama because of my hope and change. Basically, Obama and Trump have both been referendum presidents uh, on a system that was fundamentally acknowledged to be broken. Not like Clinton, not like Bush, who, who sort of takes control at a ge in, a, in a time of general economic expansion and peace, actually, until 9-11, very, very brief period. Um, Clinton was basically a, a peacetime president for the most part. You know, Kosovo is a thing, but it wasn't, it's not the same as the invasion of Iraq. It's not the same as perpetually uh, occupying Afghanistan for no reason other than opium. The Republicans, though, they're being encouraged by the Democrats to like like Mitt Romney and, st and stuff, including Liz Cheney. She's literally Dick Cheney's daughter, need I say more. The reason why they're doing this is is quite clear. The Democrats want the Republicans to be weak. When the, when the Democrats, when the liberal media, for example, the Democrat partisan media in part, posit that, well, the Republicans need to do some soul searching, Trump's an evil man, and you need to wipe away the MAGA shit and, and go back to the way things were. They're not doing that for your benefit. No, they want to beat you. They want you to be weak and fractious. Therefore, if they can pit, you know, the, uh, the uprising, the upswelling of populism, which involves most of the younger right as opposed to the older ones, if they can get the, uh, a culture war going within the Republican Party, it makes their job very easy. Because by pitting people in your party against one another, it allows them with a slim majority to run roughshod over you. The fact is Liz Cheney was uh, doing the wrong thing by voting for impeaching Trump. Um, Trump did not cite uh, a foment an insurrection. I have no doubt whatsoever that if the Senate even is crazy enough to convict, and I have misgivings about whether that's even physically possible due to the structure of the Senate under Leahy, even if they do, Imagine that he actually got prosecuted in a, by, in a court of law like in New York. He found it completely innocent. No reasonable person would construe what Trump said as, as attempting to cause an insurrection or a coup or whatever. It wasn't an insurrection anyway. What happened at the Capitol was a riot. Liz Cheney and other Republicans, some of them, jumped the gun. Uh, so you have like the Mitt Romney types, the Lindsey Graham types at times. You have the fair-weathered Republicans, Lindsey Graham and Mitch McConnell. Uh, thank goodness they're on their way out as well. Remember when Mitch McConnell a few months ago, his hands were all bruised up, and it was like, he's like, oh, don't worry, nothing's wrong. Well, what happened, dude? Did you, like, fall down? Falling down when you're your age is, is no fucking joke. His hands were all wrapped up. He looked like a fucking mummy. They should expel her outright from the party, though. They should also expel people like Mitt Romney. That is the past. The past of the Republican Party, quite clearly, are the neocons. Just like on the De in the Democratic Party, arguably the neoliberals are on their way out. It'll be nice, a refreshing change, to have actually two political ideologies to choose from instead of just one in mainline politics. You've got third-party movements. Uh, the LP decided to uh, nominate the least principled candidate they possibly could and pissed away half of what Gary Johnson built in the last election. And even he didn't do that well. Now keep in mind, he considered it a red-letter day if he cracked 4% in the average stand. I think the only one he was up there in was New Mexico, where he had been governor anyway and had more name recognition. 
The Republican Party is insane if they decide to, to side with uh, Liz Cheney, you know, Dick Cheney's daughter, Mitt Romney, the also ran, and people like that, they're losers. That's the whole point. They, on, on a national scale, you can't extrapolate their localized support to a national scale anyway. Mitt Romney tried this and failed spectacularly against a president who was overseeing very high unemployment, several wars that weren't going well, numerous terrorist attacks. In the first debate, fell apart completely. Mitt Romney couldn't even come close to beating him. If you want to get advice about where the party should go from somebody like Liz Cheney or Mitt Romney, then your party arguably deserves to collapse, burn, and die. Um, that probably would be the best thing for it. The best thing for the Democrats would have been if they had lost spectacularly in this last election. Now, of course, they did. They lost control of an additional state house. They, they lost most of their support, their excess support in the House. We won't, uh, we won't talk about the Hong Kong part of the election because we're not allowed to do that on YouTube and certain other uh, notorious big tech sites. Uh, but they did, but not enough. They still have that bravado. They still haven't learned their lesson. And some pundits tried to tell them, even, even going by the main, le main uh, stream results, they're like, well, you need to do some soul searching because you just barely scrape by against Trump despite his low approval and stuff. Yeah, that would probably be a good idea, but the Democrats aren't going to be willing to do that until after the midterms. My expectation is they get completely annihilated in the midterms. By then, Beijing Biden's honeymoon period, MSM propaganda side will be over, and all of these neocons in the Republican Party should be primaried out and gotten rid of. The, the, the people that consider themselves broadly conservative, and for, for instance, I'm not a Republican, I'm a libertarian. If I were voting in the midterms at all, I would definitely not support any neocons. I wouldn't support a Mitt Romney or a Liz Cheney. If there was a populist there to potentially support, I could think about it because they're actually some of their ideas are worth voting for. I already know what the neocons are going to do. They did it for decades and it failed. They're exactly the same as the Pelosi Democrats. They're all the same fucking shit. That's about all. Peace out.